Here you open up your hymn books to number 12 and sing loud and proud. <laughs> Hello out there, we're on the air. It's hockey night tonight. The tension grows, the whistle blows. And what a ice. couple of weeks for us here in Canada. And I have to admit that I have never been this into the Olympics as I have been into these Olympics here in our hometown. Each medal win, and I've watched a lot of them because it's sermon research, right, uh, has deeply, deeply moved me. When Alexandre Bilodeau won the gold medal, the first in our country, I was beside myself, and I'm not even into moguls much, but it was bigger than that. And when Joanny Rochette finished her piece, given the story that she's been living, my heart, I, I could hardly hold it in. And when I even, and I have to admit this because I talked about figure skating being a sport two weeks ago, had tears watching Virtue and Moyer win their gold medal and do such a beautiful, pristine performance. Looking back over the past two weeks, I don't think I've ever felt more proud, nor maybe even this moment, feel more proud to be a Canadian. Or loved hearing the national anthem so much. Glorious and free, from sea to shining sea. Last Thursday, I had to smile when I saw this picture in the Globe and Mail, front page of the Globe and Mail. Bobsleigh gold in the top corner there. Itty bitty little picture. Bobsleigh silver. Tiny picture. Speed, taking, spe speed skating silver. Small picture. Speed skating bronze. Small picture. Hockey quarterfinal win. Half the page <laughs> of the front of the Globe and Mail. They got in trouble for that. <laughs> Some people didn't think it was fair. But only in Canada, eh? For sure. Because, really, what's going to happen this afternoon, in many ways, for many of us, is it. And I've been asking for a couple of weeks now, why, God? Why do we Canadians get so exhilarated by and anxious by that Slovakia game at the end? My heart has just begun to slow down so into this sport of hockey, and especially Olympic hockey. Why is it so important? So as I'm pondering those questions, a thought comes to me that I need to go to a higher power. And so I sent an email on a flyer to Roy McGregor of the Globe and Mail, who's been to a million Olympics and surely knows the answer to my spiritual searching question. And so I sent him an email and said, what's this about? What are our yearnings about and our desires all about? And would you be willing to help me do some research for my sermon? And he emails back in like five minutes and goes, sure, I'll help you with this. And gives me his cell phone when he's going to be in Vancouver and says, call me there if you need any help. And so I'm going, wow, that was pretty cool. So I sent him the questions, and then he wrote this back to me over a couple of emails, but I put it all together here. Why are we this way? He says, Canadians aren't known for much, even the things we should be known for. Americans say basketball was invented in Springfield. It was, but by a Canadian, and he capped by a Canadian. They say the telephone was invented there. It wasn't, but here, by a Canadian. We invented hockey, and no one disputes this. We embraced it as our national game, and we are one of a few countries where only one game matters above all others, hockey. The Olympics give us a chance to have the world notice that Canadians truly own this game they invented. Our specific yearnings and desires are simple. I asked him, what, what, what's going on deep inside of us? Hockey, he says, I believe, allows Canadians to show the world the face Canadians wish the world would to see in Canada. Resilient, tenacious, teamworking, hardworking, determined, filled with heart, ultimately triumphant, and yet humble in victory. And then in brackets he says, after the wild piling on and cheering and champagne drinking and cigar smoking, of course. <laughs> Those girls. <laughs> as I read his words, literally, as I'm reading his words, Bible words start to run through my head. 
And one verse in particular from the opening book of the Bible, Genesis, the opening chapter, where after God has created the whole world and then finished by making the pinnacle of his creation, man and woman, says to that man and woman, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. There's something in Christian theology that's called the cultural mandate, and it's based on this verse that we human beings, nations, have a calling to create and fill the world. We fill it in part, in huge part, by making culture, and culture, in huge part, especially now in this country, is made up of sport. And so when we are doing sport, the creation of this part of culture well and with excellence, then I would argue we are obeying God, honoring God, and even go so far as to say we are worshiping God through this cultural gift of hockey. To create what we did is to be a human being. To come up with hockey is to be a Canadian. Saint Irenaeus in the second century said, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. And in about two and a half hours, we will be fully alive. The Richard Mao, another theologian, wrote a book, many books, on this cultural mandate, and he defines it this way. He says, what Adam and Eve, those first people, were supposed to fill the earth with were general products and patterns of human culture, language, labeling systems, tools, schedules, works of art, family activities, And all of these things were meant to glorify God, including hockey. Now, hockey doesn't always glorify God because there are open ice headshots that aren't fair and slashes and trips. I mean, surely the game of hockey, in the game of hockey, all players have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's from Romans 3, except for the all-players part. But still, even in this fallen state, hockey is a good cultural gift, God's gift to us as Canadians, a gift that we are going to open in its fullest and most beautiful red-ribboned way today, golden red-ribboned way today, a gift from Him to us, through us as a nation. And when we do it well, God is honored and, I think, pleased. 